Matrix 67, Puzzle 21. The square image below contains 24 smaller squares, each with a different integral size. Determine the length of the shaded square. The way I understand this problem is that we want to satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared plus c squared and so on all the way to x squared and this sum has to be equal to y squared. Also, the side lengths of each square has to be integer sized. So the side lengths of each square could either be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. So for this equation, all the variables have to be natural numbers. To start solving this problem, we have to find the place on the square with the most information. This is in the top left, where we can see a lot of squares concentrated to a small area. This red square is the smallest square. I will define its side lengths as a, and note down that a equals a. This square next to a, I will define its side lengths as b, b equals b. Now above square a and b, we have a square that can be expressed in terms of a and b. The side length of this square is equal to the side length of a plus the side length of b. c equals a plus b. The square to the right has the side lengths a plus c. d equals a plus c. Now we know that c is equal to a plus b, so we can plug that into the equation and we get that d is equal to a plus a plus b. So d is 2a plus b. The square above has the side lengths c plus d. e equals c plus d. We know the values of c and d in terms of a and b. We get a plus 2a equaling 3a and b plus b equaling 2b. The square to the right has the side lengths d plus e f equals d plus e, so we get 2a plus 3a equaling 5a, and b plus 2b equaling 3b. Let's zoom out and see if there are any other squares that we can define in terms of a and b. I realize that it's getting a bit hard to keep track over which square is which, so I will mark the squares with their respective character. Square g has side lengths f plus d plus a, g equals f plus d plus a. Of course, we want g in terms of a and b, so we plug in the values and we get that g is equal to 8a plus 4b. Square h has side lengths g plus a minus b. h equals g plus a minus b. Now, if we look at the equation of g, we can just increase its a by 1, and decrease its b by 1 to get h. h equals 9a plus 3b. This is enough to define the question mark square in terms of a and b. The question mark square has side lengths g plus h, i equals g plus h, so we get that i is equal to 8a plus 9a equaling 17a, and 4b plus 3b equaling 7b. Now, this is not enough information to solve the problem yet, we need to keep going. I will scroll up the equations a bit to give some more space. So square j has side lengths e plus c plus b, j equals e plus c plus b. Adding these three equations together, we get 4a plus 4b. Next, we want to define square k, its side lengths is equal to the side length of j plus e plus f. k equals j plus e plus f. Here we have the equations for e and f. Adding these three equations together, we get 12a plus 9b. Square l has side lengths equal to k plus j. l equals k plus j. l equals 16a plus 13b. Square m has side lengths i plus h. m equals i plus h. We plug in i and h. m equals 26a plus 10b. Now, if we zoom out, 
we can see that we have this rectangle in the top left. The width of the rectangle can be expressed in two different ways. If you look at the bottom, we see that the width Z is equal to M plus I, M is 26A plus 10B, and I is 17A plus 7B. Adding them together, we get 43A plus 17B. If you look at the top, we see that the width Z is equal to L plus K, L has 16A plus 13B, and K has 12A plus 9B. Adding them together, we get 28A plus 22B. If we take the first equation minus the second equation, then on the left side, we get Z minus Z equaling zero. On the right side, we get 43A minus 28A equaling 15A and 17B minus 22B equaling minus 5B. We add 5b to both sides, and then divide them by 5, giving b equals 3a. Let's scroll back up to the start of the equations. a equals a, but we now know that b is just 3a, c equals a plus b, a plus 3a is 4a, d is equal to 2a plus b, so 2a plus 3a is 5a. And then we do this for all the equations. We have now expressed the side lengths of all the squares within this rectangle as an integer multiple of a, but is this enough to solve the problem? In the start of the video, I stated that the side length of all the squares have to be positive integers, so far, we have shown that the side lengths within this rectangle in the top left are integer multiples of a, meaning that if a is a positive integer, then all the side lengths of all the squares in this rectangle are positive integers. But this is not enough to solve the problem. It might be that some square outside of this rectangle has side lengths that are not integer multiples of a. For example, some square might have a side length of 51a divided by 2. So for the side length of this square to be a positive integer, then a has to be a multiple of 2. So to solve this problem, we need to keep going and express all squares in terms of a. Now, like in the start, we can't define any of these squares directly in terms of a. So I will define the side length of square n as n. So n equals n. The side length of square O is just the height of this rectangle in the top left minus n. The height is just k plus f plus g plus i and then minus n. O equals k plus f plus g plus i minus n. Here we have the values of f, g and i. Adding them all together, we get 111a and then minus n. Square P has side lengths n minus O. P equals n minus O, equaling 2n minus 111a. So what square can we find next? If you look at square Q, its side length is equal to the side length of the entire square minus n plus P. Q equals L plus K plus n minus n plus P. We have n minus n, so we can just let them cancel out. And then we have q equals l plus k minus p. For a, this gives 39 plus 55 plus 111 equaling 205a. And then for n, we just have minus 2n. Next, we have square r. Its side length is p minus q. r equals p minus q. If we plug in p and q, we get 4n minus 316a. For square s, we have q minus r. s equals q minus r. We plug in the equations and we get 521a minus 6n. Let's move the equations up a bit to give space for more equations. Square t has side length equal to r plus p minus o t equals r plus p minus o, giving 7n minus 538a. 
The next square is this tiny square, square u. The side length of square u is equal to t plus r minus s. u equals t plus r minus s, equaling 17n minus 1375a. For square v, we have that the side length is equal to s minus u, v equals s minus u. We plug in the values in terms of n and a, and we get that v is equal to 1896a minus 23n. For square w, we have that the side length is equal to v minus u. So w is equal to v minus u, equaling 3271a minus 40n. We have two different ways of expressing the side length of square x. The first way is that the side length is equal to w plus v. So x equals w plus v. This makes x equal to 5167a minus 63n. The second way is to express the side length in terms of t plus s. x equals t plus s. This makes x equal to n minus 17a. Now we do the exact same thing as we did with b. We take the first equation minus the second equation. On the left side, we get x minus x equaling zero. On the right side, we get 5167a minus minus 17a equaling 5184a. And for n, we have minus 63n minus n, so minus 64n. We add 64n to both sides and then divide them by 64. This gives n equals 81a. Now let's go back in our equations to the first point where we defined n. Now we know that n is equal to 81a, o equals 111a minus 81a equaling 30a. And we just keep on going like this for all the equations. We only have one side length left to define, the side length of the full square. The side length of square y equals the side length of square L plus k plus n. y equals 55a plus 39a plus 81a equaling 175a. In the start of the video, I stated that we wanted each of these 25 characters to be positive integers. All of the characters are integer multiples of a, meaning that as long as a is a positive integer, then all the other characters will also be some different positive integer. We wanted to know the side length of the question mark square. The side length was defined as i, which is equal to 38a. i is equal to 38 times a, where a is any natural number, meaning that the smallest answer is 38, but we have an infinite list of answers that are all the multiples of 38. That was everything for this video. Bye-bye.